How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Figure Four Daily, joined today by Marcus Bagwell, Buff Bagwell, Marcus Alexander Bagwell. I'm sure we could go on and on. And Buff, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good, doing good. I get, you know what? That's very funny because when I hear somebody say Mark, that is a high school friend. If somebody says Marcus, that's a wrestler. And sometimes wrestlers also call each other by the wrestling name. So whenever I heard Mark, I knew that person knew me good. So, yes, but my name is actually Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Now, when fans come up to you nowadays, what do you what do they largely call you? I mean, obviously you you were a huge part of of WCW and you used both the Marcus Alexander and the Buff Bagwell names it's and Buff 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 everything's Buff everything's Buff. Yeah, yeah. They, and even WCW fought me on that. They didn't want me to lose my name. They wanted me to keep Marcus Alexander Bagwell. So for a while, I said, "Gosh," I said, "There's The Rock. There's Stone Cold." I go. I'm telling you, there's, you know, this, this is, it's time to switch it up, you know. And they wouldn't let me do it, so they called me Marcus Buff Bagwell for a long time. And um, finally, toward the end, they started to call me Buff. Now, you obviously were part of the Monday Night Wars, the original wars, and I don't know oh. if you if you followed it much, but we had a second brief war for two months. Impact went to Monday nights and quickly got slaughtered, moved back to Thursday nights. And any thoughts on how that whole thing went down? Uh, I mean, I heard you, but I didn't quite catch you. Uh, Monday, let's just say, you know? Oh, the Monday Night Wars, the when Impact went head-to-head with Raw for the last couple of months and ended up right. being moved back to Thursdays. I mean, did you follow any of that, and, and what were your thoughts? Oh my God! I was we, I was the world tag team champion at the time, and it was horrible because the fans don't want to see you twice, you know. And and the, even if they do, it's hard to you know to you know have them sit there for you know two shows. Sure. So we literally you know would uh, you know do Nitro live. And then we'd roll the nitro stuff down, put the thunder stuff up, and ask everybody to stay. We'd do things in the middle to have them stay. And, um, but, uh, we'd do thunder, thunder on the same night. It was, it was, it was, that's when I, that's when we knew the, you know, the, the, the Titanic had been hit. Sure. I know you're you're still wrestling. It looks at uh, the calendar here like you're doing two to three shows per month. And how, how are those going for you? They're going real good. What I've done basically is I've hired a manager, and uh, I was getting screwed over so much that I, you know I was getting they didn't have the money when I got there. I mean, if you really add up the one hundred dollars here, the the you know the what the the fifty dollars here. I mean, I did, I was getting killed, dude. And yeah. and then you know it, my 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 budget went from just you know it, nine eight seven six, and I said that's it, I ain't it no more. So basically, I hired a manager, and I now work less and make more. So it just all makes sense. But I had to have a little guidance to do that. On your website, there's a link here. You can actually watch the video of when you broke your neck in WCW. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. obviously that was a big story. And now here it is almost we're almost 15 years later right now. Yeah. And how's the neck holding up? Great. As long as I stay, you know, uh, mobile. You know, because if I get you know, lazy or sit around the house or it, it gets stiff on me, you know, but if I, if I wrestle and work out and do my regular routine, it does not hurt me at all. That's actually interesting. You, you, you feel better. Very lucky. You're very lucky. Yeah. You, your neck actually feels better when you wrestle. That's interesting. Well, it makes, it really makes sense. If you think about it, it's, 
you know, uh, I mean, if you sit there and you got arthritis, you're going to, you know, it's, it's going it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going to go stove up. And movement makes, makes you know, blood flow get there and makes you feel better and all that. So it's, uh, you know, the reason why people get arthritis is because they don't move. And and so uh, so movement is being as long as it's been for my neck. You know, there's you know I definitely got arthritis back there. I, mean, I take I take Advil every you know every day you know for 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 my headaches and neck pains and stuff. And um, but yeah, but yeah, they uh, you actually um, 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 just really don't know how it is when you until you you know. And do you break your neck, dude? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now you so 15, 15 years has been a long time, but it, it, it my my opinion, long story short, to put a check in the box is, uh, you know, it, it's better just just to keep moving. I'm sure you probably heard that Chris Canyon passed away, and you guys worked together in WCW, and and any memories of of his career and and him. Yeah, I mean, we had, we had we had some memories. I mean, you know, I mean, um, I, I wasn't we wasn't like in the same clique or anything like that. But uh, we uh, um, actually, he, uh, you know, at the very end was the gimmick that I had with him, and it was the G you know, bag on the on the pole match, and. That was about, I think it was the last uh, show for uh, pay-per-view, I think, for WCW. Vancouver, we had a show out there, I can't remember what it was called, but um, it was in Vancouver. It was, this, that's when Dallas was hurt, and Canyon was going around doing the Donald Cut Everybody with a fake blonde wig on. Yes. <laughs> And it was great, great television. And he was diamond cut my mom and, and, and everything. So it was it was a pretty good little storyline. And that may have been the uh new blood rising pay per view, probably. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Now when you went to WWE, I heard a lot of stories from different people about how the WCW guys were I mean, they were largely disrespected. I mean, they were brought in and, I mean, you know, everybody was hired, but at the same time, you were treated like you were outsiders, like you were actual enemies, even though you were uh, under... Oh, yeah. It was rough, bro. And I was and I was in there from Jump Street, which is the, the worst place to be, is, you know, being, you know, you know, you know, being there first, because, you know, you want to let everything get settled and all that stuff first, but... But my my contract just by bad luck uh, came up, and I had to switch gears. So I was one of the first ones there, and Dallas Page was same reason the contract was up, and that's why they had eleven guys and uh, eleven or twelve, and uh, yeah, so they um, um, actually. Uh, uh, you know, Johnny Ace is who looked after that twelve. That's how that that was his first job. Yeah, and and uh, that was his deal. You know, was to make sure we all you know we all made it. So, were there any other incidents that really stuck out to you as man? This is this is some real disrespect by WWE here. Um. Yeah, just, just yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like guys that I was great friends with, dude. Literally, I mean, would look at me like you're shaking my hand, yeah. you know. And they'd pa pause on shaking your hand. I mean, and forgetting that you're, you know, you're, you're studying Steve Austin and going bald and worried about it and. Then you broke your arm and you got fired from WCW. Do you remember? You know, do you remember all that? Well, I was there. You know, and I don't forget those kind of things. Yeah. But a lot of people do. A lot of people do. But yes, I did get a lot of those looks. And keep in mind, you know, I didn't, I didn't blame anybody or get mad at anybody because 
It wasn't their fault. If Buff Bagwell, when the time that I was there, came in, that's taken somebody's job away. Yeah. So, period, I really had no friends at all. Because why would we want you here and welcome you here when you may take my job away? I mean, except for the la- except for the top three or four guys, everybody was possibly getting their job taken away from them if I got a job or a push, you know. Yeah. And then you had Booker, you know, and you had um, Dallas, you know, but they just used it. It was, I mean, my personal opinion is it was just a set-up plan. It was a total set-up, just a bias to be this, you know, on the page and put it on the shelf. Yeah. And that's my personal opinion. I, did that. I think he really did just say, uh, you know, I'm going to buy it, put it on the shelf, call the company, which I don't quite understand. And my analogy on that is you've got at McDonald's, there's never just the McDonald's. There's always something by it. Burger sure. King, Wendy's. And the reason for that in marketing, you find out and you know that competition, you know, brings money. And that McDonald's is going to be great for a while, but eventually you're going to sick of it. And that's kind of what Vince has done. He's kind of screwed himself, is what I think, and and said, you know, you know, what have I done here? I've I've taken the I've taken the the the, the war, as you called it. The war out of this. I've taken the, the competition out of this, and now why does anybody want to watch? You know, it'd be like the Atlanta Falcons playing the Atlanta Falcons. You know. Yeah. Have Who you cares? ever Have you ever thought of writing a book about your experiences in this business? I, I've got uh, one that's already you know uh, ready to go. It's just you you can't you know put it out until you know you have. Uh, so you're ready, you know what I'm saying? And if you're not popular at the time, and wrestling's not popular, I mean, you know, Mick Foley had number one best-selling book, you know, and The Rock did too, and 99% of it was because, you know, they put it out at the right time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Wrestling was hot, and they were hot, and, you know, number one book. So now wrestling's not as hot, so it'd be a little tougher, you know? Now, what about acting gigs? I know you you did some of that when you were uh, a little bit younger. And have you have you had a chance to do any of that recently? And and uh, still looking to do it? I uh, always looking to do it. You know, I basically live off of uh, you know television for eleven years, and you know having you know being fortunate enough to be on te- television for eleven years, and eleven years of television is very strong. And so I was I basically just you know. Uh, keep my website up and book myself and you know, have my manager and, and do my own thing. And uh, so um, I, I, I want the way it's going, you know. How's Judy doing these days? Uh, she's doing good. Actually, I guess I guess uh, Judy was both your mom and then you eventually uh, got married to a Judy. And the same little name. Yeah, same middle name? Judy Ann Bagwell, two of them. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Does, does that get tough when you have uh, family get-togethers and, and people are yelling for Judy Ann and no one knows who they're well, talking to? We we, we go, we say, we talk, we say Judy 1, Judy 2. Judy 1 and Judy 2. There yeah. you go. Nothing gets very confusing. Oh. Now you've got some some shows coming up here. I'm looking at the calendar. You've got a date coming up in uh, looks like the Fannin County High School in Blue Ridge, Georgia. And yeah. are these? I mean, do you have like certain groups that you work for every single month, or or do people? Uh, yeah, there's about four or five that I work for every single month. You know, but um, um, you know, the rest of them are just uh, you know trying to make a show. If it works, fine. If it don't, fine. But I've got probably probably five or six, you know, you know, consecutive bookers that that are always there. So you get you a know, chance, so. 
get a chance to, uh, I mean, obviously some people like, uh, you know, Honky Tonk Man, for example, will be flown all over, except it's always like a one-shot deal, and, and you're getting the opportunity to actually be involved in, in storylines and such in these shows. Right. Now, but, any... uh, I'm, not, I'm not even flying no more. Yeah. I've cut that out. I'm done with that. If it's eight hours or less, I'll drive it, so I'm not even flying anymore. Now, was this just the the travel sucks, or or was it... Uh... Well, it's a, a combination of just what's going on with the airports and people getting in trouble, and if they're getting in trouble, I'm going to get in trouble. And, and at the same time, um, people are just not wanting to pay you know, the, the, the price of the tickets. And and so it's just, it, just, it just got hard. So I just said, if you want, I'm done. I said, I am done. I said, I am going to... No more flying. So my manager agreed, and no flying. Now, obviously, the last question, WWE, TNA. TNA is actually uh, a lot of the old WCW guys are, are back on TV. I think Hall and Nash are about to win the tag titles on the next show. And have they approached you about the possibility of, of coming in? or is, is the... I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't rang my phone, and I haven't rang theirs. Um, don't know why. But uh, I'm a big believer in timing, and, uh, you know, they, I'm, not, I'm not hard to find. And uh, so they know where I'm at. So if they want to hire me, they can. If they don't, I totally understand. And if, if you were hired, I mean, obviously you'd be ready to uh, jump back on those airplanes again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to yeah, That's just Orlando, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, Buff, the website, of course, to uh, check out is therealbuff.com, and you yes. can head up there. There's a gallery. There's the video of the uh, the broken neck. He's got a store up there. Also information on how you can uh, contact Buff and book an event. And actually, one last question here. I see the, the address is therealbuff.com. Did you have an issue over the last uh, few years of, of fake Buff Bagwells appearing here and there? No, uh, what happened, that's a very good question. What happened is uh, my first website was Buff the Stuff. And this is when I thought computers were just, there's no way this is going to last. This is a joke, you know. Sure. There's no way this is going to hang around. And so I had Buff the Stuff. Well, uh, I was about two days late on doing my domain name. And didn't know about that. Oops. You had to do that every two years. Well, we were very popular at the time. So somebody scooped my name up. It was a guy that sold T-shirts in South Africa. Huh. So when you went to Buff the Stuff, it, his website came up. He used me to, to sell his merchandise or try to. So I called him up, tried to get it back. I said, hey, bro, I said, um, you know, this thing was $5,000. I said, take that and shove it. The sun don't shine, brother. So I sat there and thought and thought and thought and realized how strong the Internet world was getting. And I said, I'm the real buff. I'm the real one. So I did it. You know, I did the real buff.com just thinking out of just thought of it, you know, just because, you know, I mean, if you were scrolling down and trying to find me, wouldn't you want to go to the real one? <laughs> sure. So I hope you know, that's that's part of the reason why. I just want to say, I said, you know what? I said, I am the real one. I can say I'm the real one. And there's some people out there that act like me and all that on Facebook and, and all kind of, and, you know, whatever the other one is, but. My space and all that, but when you go to the real buff dot com, brother, you're getting the real one. Now, whatever happened to buff the stuff dot com? I don't know. I never, never followed up on it. I just moved on. It just it was my life was going so fast then. That was when we were rolling. You know, I mean, that's when you know we were doing you know two hundred fifty days a year, and you know we were rolling and just shoot. Man, I don't even know. I don't even know. Well, there you go, everybody. Buff, uh, therealbuff.com is the place to go. I don't want to plug the wrong one there. Therealbuff.com. You can head up there for more information on Buff Bagwell. A list of upcoming dates. If you're in the area, you can head out there and check them out.
getting autographed. There's uh, stuff you can purchase there as well, and uh, it's a good place to go. So, Buff, I want to thank you very much for doing the show today. Hey, man, I appreciate you and you guys check the website out. I got some. I got four new volumes of my whole career out there from when I started with Two Cool Scorpio all the way to Stars and Stripes and American Males to to just being Buff Bagwell NWO. So it's it's real good stuff, and it shows a 30-second little clip that you see what you're buying. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good site, man. It's a very good site. Well, thanks again, and uh, very much appreciated. Best of luck in the future. And, of course, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll talk to you again after a while.